Taylor and welcome to Pulse Television. Coming up on tonight's show, Lisa meets some adorable puppies. We trek from the Yu Yangs to Geelong's newest art festival. Rachel has fun at the park and Jay Ho performs in the studio. But first up, here's Jamie at the Queenscliff Maritime Museum. I'm here at the Queenscliff Maritime Museum and we're gonna have a chat to the president, John Barrett. So let's go take a look around. with John Barrett at the Queenscliff Maritime Museum. Hi John, thanks for having us. Good morning. Can you tell us a little bit about how the museum started? Certainly, uh, the uh, vessel you see behind us is the Queenscliff lifeboat and that began its life here in Queenscliff back in 1926. It was kept in a shed on the Queenscliff Pier but retired from use in the early 70s. A group of local volunteers decided to maintain it and restore it and then ultimately find a home for it which is the building we're in now and that was completed in 1986. So since then we've moved on to uh, becoming a museum with more than just a lifeboat, it's a repository for uh, all sorts of artefacts that have come from shipwrecks over the years. So we've got a vast collection, more actually hidden away in, in storage than what we can display at once here. So it's quite a, an, an interesting museum. So the artefacts that you do have here, where do those artefacts come from? Mostly it's uh, out of private collections, maybe skin divers have found things over the years and families have decided they no, no longer wish to keep the, the artefacts and they'll donate them to the museum. There are amnesty periods where those sorts of things can be handed in without any penalty because removing uh, artefacts from shipwreck sites now is, is an illegal activity so shipwrecks must be left intact as they, as they are. Yeah. Um, I've noticed there's a few people walking around here, um, so can people volunteer here or how do they get involved? Volunteering is a, an important part of our museum's activity. We have probably 45 to 50 people, people um, ladies and gentlemen, the boys come in for a couple of days a week and we'll do maintenance activities around the, the museum. We have ladies doing uh, shop sales and uh, there's also the cataloguing process of recording the artefacts we have and correctly storing them away so that there's an ongoing process and we're always happy to have volunteers come in, certainly. The museum operation relies basically on admission charges. We also have access to the Point Lonsdale Lighthouse and we conduct tours in there but primarily we rely on the admissions of those two functions and also any fundraising activities we have. This last weekend was Maritime Weekend in Queenscliff where we had uh, about 40 cooter boats doing racing on, the, on Port Phillip and we also held a couple of functions in the evenings um, as fundraisers but we're totally dependent upon those admissions and we're also on the lookout for any corporate activity where uh, related businesses perhaps out of the shipping areas could come on board with us to assist in our funding. So it's quite an interesting future we've got ahead of us. Well thanks for having a chat to us today John. I think everyone should get down here and have a look because it's definitely a very interesting place with a lot of history. From the Queenscliff Maritime Museum, I'm Jamie from Pulse Television. <laughs> Dee is from Assistance Dogs Australia and she has brought some fantastic dogs in here. We've got Spud and Tigger and welcome Dee. Thank you. Most people know guide dogs but it's now been expanded to assistance dogs. Um, can you tell us more? Um, yes, we're a completely separate organisation providing um, dogs, service dogs for people with physical disabilities. So it enables them to be independent and live a full um, independent life like anyone else can. And it's also um, good companionship as well. And that's one of the things we teach them is to shake paw. Um, and that helps break down the barrier to, so people can interact more easily and without worrying about how to approach somebody. We've always known these lovely dogs are very clever, very intelligent. Yes. What kind of tasks do you get them to do on a daily basis? 
Um, it very much is an individual basis on the recipient, but mainly it's things like picking up dropped items. So if you imagine if you're in a wheelchair, you can't reach down to pick something up off the floor very easily or safely. Um, open and close doors and drawers, fetch items out of the fridge, um, retrieve a telephone, um, which is very important for emergencies. There's also an alert bark, so if somebody falls out of their chair or has a fall, um, the dog will st immediately start barking without a cue until help is um, received and so that's really really useful and very helps people feel safe um, and there's other items that they can do in shops so they can deliver money to a counter put their paws on the counter um, and take credit cards to the counter pick up items off the shelf and actually just laying down like these two are here is very important in their job so if you imagine somebody out shopping or going out for coffee or going to work when they stop, you, we need the dogs to lay down and do nothing. How intensive is the training? What's the major steps of the training process? Once they're eight weeks of age, they go to volunteer raisers um, and they look after them in their home till around 14 months of age. We help oversee the training and guidance through that time. And then they come in for advanced training. And that can take anything from six months to eight months, depending on the skills required for that dog. And they usually go out to recipients between 18 months and two years of age as a working dog. Dee has brought in some cute little balls of fluff. We have two little baby pawn puppies. How old are these guys? Uh, five weeks. Five weeks old. Yeah. Yeah. How do we raise these guys? Um, so we're looking for volunteers to look after these puppies for the first 12 to 14 months of their life. Um, we oversee their training and care of the puppies, but we're looking for volunteers to take them into their homes. Um, we provide all the food and veterinary care and any expenses, uh, but you need to provide the time and the love and the energy to look after them so that they can go on to be service dogs. So the breeds that you mainly concentrate on, what are they? Um, we usually use Labradors or Golden Retrievers and we also provide our dogs free of charge to our recipients as well so there's no cost at all involved for somebody waiting on a dog. The public can sponsor puppies as well so they can sponsor so many dollars a month. So if you'd like to be a puppy raiser family, what's the best way to get into contact um, with you guys? Via our website and there'll be a home interview view and just check out the property and check out the requirements and yeah that's nice and easy. <laughs> so if you want to find out more about these cute little bundles of joy go to assistancedogs.org.au